Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I hope those are watching right now this tutorial are doing great. Welcome to Fahad's tutorial once again and this is Fahad Hussain. In this video I shall explain about aluminium extraction. So in my first video I was explaining uh, the stages of uh, metal extraction. You know that uh, we need to crush first and then condensation and then conversion of those ores to oxides and then a reduction and purification. So these five steps is very important to understand that how the metal extraction is done. In this video particularly I will explain about aluminium extraction and we know that aluminium is extracted from a minerals bauxite and there is two process very important two process. So first we need to know that from bauxite bauxite we need to convert it into alumina alumina and then from alumina to aluminium so as we want aluminium so there is two process that we need to go from bauxite to alumina first and from alumina to aluminium you know that in this process the bauxite is actually Al2O3.2H2O from bauxite you'll have alumina and from alumina to you'll have aluminium. So the process where it is said about Bayer's process, this is very important. Bayer's process or Bayer's method and the other process from alumina to aluminium will have a Harold Holt process. I mean, this is Hall Harold process. Sorry that I forgot. Hall Harold Harold process. So Hall Harold process. So from bauxite we need to find alumina first, and from alumina to aluminium. So in these two different process, we need to know that what are the chronology of the reactions and the process. So I want you, those are watching right now, to have some concentration on this tutorial because this is important. So I have drawn something which is very related to electrolysis. So before going to explain, this is actually Hall Harold process. Before going to explain, we need to know what is the Bayer's process. So number one, the Bayer's process in this case in this case bears process or bears method what happened first this bauxite that aluminium oxide aluminium oxide undergo reactions with sodium hydroxide which is concentrated which is concentrated so this concentrated sodium hydroxide where you can think about that 45% sodium hydroxide and then it will produce NaAlO2 and water. This is called sodium aluminate. This is called sodium aluminate. So, this sodium aluminate then it will react with water. So, the, the temperature here should be, the temperature here should be regarding 140 to 150 degrees Celsius and the process will continue to 2 to 8 hours. This is an industrial process and you know that we know the difference between minerals and ores. So, when this is industrial processes because economy is a great factor here so from ores when the industry will extract the metal or non-metal they should be profitable so that is why each and every single steps the cost the management is a factor so when sodium aluminate is being uh, then sodium aluminate will undergo with reactions with water and this process is a little bit less temperature which is 50 degrees celsius so in 50 degrees celsius it's called dilution dilution you know what happened sodium hydroxide will produce sodium hydroxide that was used previously it's again you got 
and aluminium hydroxide will be precipitated. Aluminium hydroxide will be precipitated. And this aluminium hydroxide in third state it will be ignited. It will be ignited at nearly 1100 to 1200 degrees Celsius. So 1100 degrees Celsius and we need to ignite it. I mean huge temperature. Then then actually aluminium we got aluminium and water. So now you see that we got alumina after after these three consecutive reaction. So this is called the Bayer's process or Bayer's method. And you know that those who have already watched my first tutorial that I explained the five steps of metal extraction on that process. Uh, there was a, a chemical process of uh, initial purification that is condensation of the ores. You know that the condensation of the ores can be done in four ways. Number one is hydrolytic, froth flotation, magnetic separation and chemical process. So this is a chemical method where the other three processes is not possible. You know about the froth flotation and magnetic separations and hydrolytic process, what are those? It's all about the condensation of ores. I mean, it's about initial purification. So, aluminium hydroxide will be ignited at 1100 degrees Celsius and then we'll go alumina. Right now, from alumina, we need to, we need to extract aluminium through the electrolysis process and this is known as hall harrells process. So secondly, we we'll think about hall harrells hall -Harald process. Okay, in this process, what we need? We need to think something that this is an industrial process, industrial activity, so there should be a cost-effective thing. Alumina, it, we need to find it in molten stage. So the molten alumina we need. So we need this alumina should be molten and the melting point of alumina is 2050 degrees Celsius. So producing this 2050 degrees Celsius is really costly. So that is why to minimize the melting point with the hot Harold's process we need to mix two things that is cryolite and fluorospar. So alumina <clears throat> alumina will be added with Na3AlF6 and fluorospar. This is aluminium oxide. Alumin so it, this is called so uh, sodium hexafluoroaluminate or cryolite. This is known as cryolite. Cryolite and this is known as fluorospar or calcium fluoride. What is their function? This cryolite will minimize or will make less the, the melting point of aluminum oxide because we know that the melting point of aluminum oxide is 2000, 2050 degrees Celsius. But this is costly. So when we use sodium hexafluoroaluminate or cryolite with these and calcium fluoride then the the molten uh, the, the melting point comes like 950 degree celsius so now this is feasible so it should be mixed up with 1 is to 3 is to 1 in this ratio so 1 is to 3 is to 1 ratio then will have the whole Harrell's process will be effective. How it will be effective? Now you we'll see here. So in this molten stage we have three compounds. What are those? We have alumina Al2O3, we have Na3AlF6, we have CaF2. Both. So all these molten stage are there and it is kept in an iron steel made 
huge tag where there is a graphite layer. So this blue shape is expressed as carbon layer which will uh, work as a cathode. Which will work as a cathode. And with copper clamp there is a carbon rod. Again this is carbon rod or you can say graphite rod will be dipped into the tank so that it will not touch the carbon layer. So this is electrolysis because we know that we need to extract aluminium from this alumina. So previously through the Bayer's process we could find the alumina by this process and then we need molten alumina with cryolite with fluorosperm in this tank to extract aluminium. So now you think the graphite layer which is just inside inside of the tank which is made of steel and the carbon rod that is dipped into the liquid or into the molten solution. Now it will work as a node. This will work as a node and this will work as cathode. Now one thing is important. As this is huge heat is given, so in the upper surface there is a carbon coke powder it will be will be there as because the coke powder will prevent the coke powder will prevent the radiation of the heat so the heat will not be lost so to prevent the heat loss the coke powder is being given in the surface of the molten solution of aluminium right now this alumina the sodium hexafluoroaluminate and fluorosperm in molten solutions are there and heat is given the heat is 950 degrees celsius now what will happen so right now in cathode and in anode two types of reaction will happen so in anode in cathode think about it in cathode before going to explain you see that there are three types of compounds are there so in aluminium we will have aluminium plus aluminium plus and oxygen minus ion in in this case sodium plus aluminium plus fluoride ion will be there and here calcium plus and fluoride ion will be there so we can see there are two three types of cations are present in this solution so which one will go first you know that through the reactivity series those who are situated in the lay in the lay, I mean in, in, uh, before that they will go first so calcium sodium and aluminium through this process aluminium is in the lower side so aluminium will go first so the cathode you know that a reduction will happen so what is going on in cathode sorry in cathode the cation will go and exit sorry the aluminium plus aluminium okay before going to explain aluminium oxide will be dissociated with al3 plus plus o2 minus so here we can say that 2L3 plus 3O2 max. So in cation Al3 plus are there. So it will accept 3 electron and it will be aluminium. In anode, in anode, what will happen? Oxygen will go and oxygen will leave 2 electrons. So it's not stable. So oxygen will add with another oxygen to produce O2. And you see that carbon powder, the coke powder given that. So in that process the carbon dioxide will be produced again. And this carbon dioxide will work again carbon to produce carbon monoxide. So that you are getting aluminium. So that aluminium will be stored here. And as it is really heavy, 
the specific density of aluminum is so high so it will be collected through this way and aluminum will be stored here so we can say that in this point we are getting aluminum so that the reaction of aluminum is aluminum oxide 2Al3 plus plus 3O2 minus so you see that aluminum oxide sodium hexafluoroaluminate calcium fluoride all are there in molten stage so the carbon rod is working as a node so what is going on in cathode the except of electron so except of electrons here so cation will accept electrons when it will go to cathode so the cathode in cathode there will be reduction and in anode there will be oxidation so we can say in cathode reduction will happen and in anode oxidation will occur that's because in anode the anion is releasing electron we know that releasing electron is oxidation and gaining electron is reduction so reduction is going on in cathode so we are getting aluminum in a liquid stage in this process so now you see that the explanation is going on here so what is the summary of the class though it's getting longer longer time of the tutorials but uh, i shall uh, explaining the extraction process based on different different materials because in the next class i shall explain about sodium extraction and then zinc extraction then lead extraction and most importantly iron extraction because there is some uh, important reactions about blast furnace so you see from bauxite to alumina, we need Bayer's process. From alumina to aluminium, we need Hall Harrell's process. So there is two scientists, uh, and this is Bayer's process. So the, through the Bayer's process from alumina, uh, bauxite, we are getting alumina, and then in Hall Harrell's process, we are mixing cryolite or sodium hexafluoroaluminate with fluorospar. So sodium hexafluoroaluminate should be used here because we know alumina, I mean aluminum oxide is a bad conductor. And also the melting point of aluminum oxide is so high. So two reasons are there. So to increase the conductivity, we are mixing sodium hexafluoroaluminate and also calcium fluoride because Ca2 plus and F2 minus, F minus, the, the size of the ions are very tiny so they can move here and they increase the conductivity and also the fluorospar or sodium hexafluoroaluminate will minimize the melting point to 950 degrees celsius and this is the electrolysis process which is very simple i know those who are already ex uh, started the previous chapter i have explained the mechanism of electrolysis and what are the factors are there so i hope you know it so thank you so very much uh, in the next video, I'm coming up with sodium extraction. So take care, stay well.